And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is Pinterest in December. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who's supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to keep up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included in all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving, personalization options, and exclusive color on the website or you can get a blank one on Amazon Prime. Also text MURDY, M-U-R-D-Y to 77222 to be part of our text message club. That's MURDY, M-U-R-D-Y to 77222 to be part of our special exclusive text message club. There's some amazing things that are happening on that platform. It's kind of a new thing for us and I'm testing it out and so I'm trying a bunch of new things. So be sure to check that out, MURDY to 77222. All right, so I apologize for not doing Thursday's podcast for those of you who are big fans and realize we missed one. I had a horrible head cold, which I think you can hear I'm still getting over a little bit. Unfortunately, I got sick and then Leah got sick and then James got sick and it was a whole thing. But we are on the mend and we are recovering and uh, so I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things here. Uh, For those of you who are looking forward to the discussion on the vegan line, it is going to have to wait a little bit, partially because I got the test samples back and there was a problem. So... I'm trying to figure out if the ways if we can overcome this problem uh, with the current kind of strategy with slight ad- adjustments or if we're going to need to scrap this whole particular material and try a new one, which is, of course, upsetting because I really wanted to get it launched. But such is life and such is the world of small business. Uh, we're coming up on 100,000 followers. Uh, that's really exciting. So who knows? Maybe by Thursday, probably more likely by next Tuesday, I'll be doing a topic, a podcast topic on that and what that means and what I'm trying to do with that. And we'll see how that goes. So that's, um, that's exciting. It just, that's the only way to describe it. It's exciting to think about. However, I, today's topic, we're talking about Pinterest in December. Now, for those of you who've been listening to some of my previous podcasts, I talked about how in the fall we were looking on diversifying our different marketing strategies, right? So we were working on getting the marketing to be done on a couple of different ways, a couple of different platforms. Up until that point, we'd been almost exclusively on Instagram with all of our ad dollars. And while that had worked out very, very well for us, Uh, It does have the problem of putting all of our eggs into one basket, and that basket, of course, could, you know, be destroyed at any time. So I've been working on trying to diversify our marketing strategy and to try to come up with alternative platforms that we can advertise on without, you know, jeopardizing what we're doing on Instagram and trying to come up with new stuff like that. So obviously there's a couple of couple of options with that you know with Pinterest we actually did paid advertising uh, we've looked at doing LinkedIn paid advertising we've looked at doing um, Twitter paid advertising those we tried to very poor success initially um, and that was something that we kind of got away from although we may go back to it so in December there is this thing with marketing it all works for the most part right in in December particularly there's just you, it's hard to have marketing dollars that don't land, right? That don't hit their mark. Uh, And the reality behind that is just that everyone's buying. It's the season, right? Everyone's trying to buy gifts for everyone. And so no matter what you do, that ad is going to hit somebody who is interested. Except for on Pinterest, that was not good for us. So initially I said, okay, well, we're going to run ads. The advantage of Pinterest, for those of you who don't know much about the platform, the platform is a, um, it's built around the, it's kind of Instagram-esque. It's actually came, I think, before Instagram, but it is Instagram-esque in that it's mostly photo-based. When you click on the photo, you it, it blo- the photo is, is put into columns, normally two or three columns. When you click on the photo, it makes the photo larger, and then it finds other images that are similar to that image, and you can search through a bunch of images. And it's actually really cool in that regard, because if you're interested in something, if you like a topic, you can literally chain a whole bunch of photos, and you can you can find up, you can go pretty deep into something, into a, that are, that's visually related, which is neat. They've actually got some pretty advanced artificial intelligence that are that, that allows the system to kind of programmatically figure out what images look similar, which is very neat. Um, and they also have a pretty cool, they have a pretty wide variety of an audience. Uh, for a long time, it was very strictly female, but that actually changed not that long ago, and it's now pretty evenly split. Still a little heavier on the female side, but it meets most of the male market too. So initially what we were doing is we were promoting our pins, and the p- pins themselves just went to wherever the, the, the picture that you clicked on. If you actually click on the picture itself, again, once it's blown up, it'll take you to the URL link. 
So I thought that this would actually be a pretty good change of pace for us, right? Because obviously, you know, a lot of our advertisement went to our profile on Instagram, not much of it, although some of it on Facebook and Instagram went to actual product or to our website. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity for us to have photos that led directly to the product itself uh, and to see how that went. And out of, the, I think, $2,000 we spent over the course of the first three weeks in December, I think we had one confirmed sale from Pinterest with that method, one. Now, for those of you who know much about marketing, you can't spend $2,000 on one sale. And that's been a, that was a real problem for us. So I ended up cutting off the marketing. And because this is, a, this is like the best time of the year, this is a great season to be doing it in during Christmas, right? Everyone's buying, so the advertising should be working really well, actually. So if it's not working during Christmas, it's probably not going to work. Now, here's what I will say in Pinterest's defense. This is a new type of marketing for us, and maybe we didn't do it right. Perhaps, like I originally assumed on Instagram, having the ads go directly to the product itself, the product page, is a turnoff because people see the price before they've been told much of the story. And so maybe that was part of the problem, and that's perfectly possible, and you know, that wouldn't be Pinterest's fault, per se, if our marketing was done wrong. We had a phenomenal cost per click on, act, on average. It was about 12 cents per click. That being said, for those of you who've used Pinterest before, there's a little thing about Pinterest that I think is, I don't know if it's intentional. It's, it's one of those things where I don't know if it's a bug or if it's a feature, but it's very easy to accidentally click on something. In fact, that happens a lot more than, than probably Pinterest would like to pretend. And so the problem is if you accidentally click on something and you immediately click out of it, right? Pinterest still thinks of that as a click, right? So in the marketing, if I'm paying for marketing and I accidentally click on something and then I click back out of it, it, Pinterest thinks that I clicked on it. So part of the really phenomenally good cost per click could be related to the fact that it was causing accidental clicks. That being said, you know, how much of that can be attributed to that and how much of it could be attributed to anything, we'll never know. What I will say is this, once we kind of saw that happening, I started to pull back a little bit on that marketing and a little bit on that advertising directly, and I kind of let it fade off. Now, Wix, the platform we use to host our website, doesn't have a good way right now to integrate with Pinterest. They're working on it, and we're actually one of the people that are working with them on working on it, and Pinterest is getting better. So for those of you who advertise with Facebook and Instagram, you know this already, you can integrate your Facebook pixel into your website directly, and that actually provides Facebook with some really, really high-powered data about how people use your website. It also means that their advertisements are very, very effective because Facebook can tell who's actually clicking on the ad, how far they're getting into your website, how long do they stay on your website, what do they most accurately follow, what are they most interested in, what do they end up clicking on, what do they end up buying, right? Facebook, because of the Facebook pixel, knows all of that data. And for those of you who are privacy nuts, you may say to yourself, oh my God, that's terrible, oh no. I don't care that much, right? If Facebook knows that about my business and it allows them to make my business more successful, then kudos to Facebook, right? Like, I don't, I don't care about them knowing that stuff. Uh, I think when you look at Pinterest, though, they don't have as integrated, they don't have like a Pinterest pixel yet. They're getting there. And they've actually got kind of a more manual way to do it. And, and this is where we're working with Wix to figure out how to integrate that. And perhaps, perhaps when that's integrated, we'll try again and we'll see if that the data that's coming back from that Pinterest pixel, for lack of a better term, uh, is driving the ads more effectively to who they should be actually shown to, which is obviously a little bit confusing. So with Pinterest, unlike the Instagram algorithm, um, I didn't, well, actually very much like the Instagram algorithm, I didn't tell Pinterest exactly who to target. I told them generically, you know, just anybody. Maybe I needed to be more specific with them. Perhaps that would be another factor that would help the ads be more successful. Perhaps the Pinterest artificial intelligence that's driving how they present their ads and show their ads isn't as good as Instagram. That's just the nature of the beast. I mean, those two platforms are competitors, just truthfully. I think overall there is an, what, what's the right way to say it? There is an uncalculated or uncalculable benefit to Pinterest now, it's not enough for me to keep doing it, but it's something that changes the equation slightly. The way most people use Pinterest is they save Pinterest pins to boards that they curate, and these boards can be things like gifts I like, or gifts I want, or gifts to give, right? It can be anything, but it can that, that's not an uncommon board, or things I, I want to buy, right? 
and they may not buy right away. They may make that board and send that board to someone they love and say, give me anything on this list, right? Like it could have a residual time delay that could cause sales to come through and we wouldn't necessarily know that. However, we do see in our Google Analytics some of the tracking data about how many people are coming from Pinterest and how effective and how many of the sales that we make are from Pinterest. And at the moment, it's not many. So it was in December we cut that marketing off and I kind of let it fade. We'll try something else. We'll try something new. We're always up for that. Uh, I think, like I said, you know, mentioned before, we are working on shifting from a diversification of marketing, which was part of our goal and it still is part of our goal and we're going to keep doing that don't get me wrong but we're going to transition from the diversification of marketing into a diversification of revenue streams so rather than try to get our advertisements on multiple platforms or on more platforms which is possible and we'll still do that we're actually going to be pushing more to say how can we sell our product in new and unique ways to audiences we previously may have reached but may not have actually sold to So we'll see how this goes. I'm, you know, this is all an experiment. This is how business runs and this is what it's about. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'll keep you guys tuned in all of this. Um, But, you know, let me know what you think, right? Leave a comment below about uh, what you think might be a good platform or a good way for us to sell. So uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in Thursday for our next topic. And don't forget to check that subscribe button below to be sure to get the latest podcast right away. If you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder journals or folios, please feel free to reach out to us on the main page of our website at murdycreative.co or you can contact us via Instagram and Facebook. You can text, email, call, direct message, tweet, snap, all of those. You know, I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible, but I do appreciate your patience. If you message us on Instagram, just FYI, it goes into an inbox that I don't see right away. So I have to actively go and like clean out the inbox of messages. So if you Instagram DM us, it may take a little bit longer. Same thing with Facebook. It's a little different with Facebook, but it's harder for us to get to those. Emails are the best options by far. Tweeting actually is a really fast way to get a response from me. So, you know, tweeting's good. Um, and Snapchatting is always pretty easy because I, I don't get that many messages on those channels. So if you wanted to get to us in a hurry, that'd probably be the best. You can also call us on the phone. Uh, from 9 to 5, we do have a phone number, 414-434-9001. You can also text that number. It, it all goes to my smartphone, so that's the world we live in. But uh, if you do email us, please don't email us multiple times. What ends up happening is, is we try to answer the emails in the order they are in the inbox, kind of oldest to newest. And if you email us multiple times, it actually shows up as the new email is what the position is. So it shows up as a new email higher in the in the chain. So um, that's just something for, the, for you guys to know. Uh, if you think we deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow our new community. So a good review can help us amazing on, on our product, can help us a ton on Facebook. We just got two more new ones that I was reading the other day and they were just, they made my heart sing. I'm so happy um, that people liked them. So you can go read our reviews on our product on facebook.com slash murdycreative.co or you can search murdycreative.co in the Facebook search bar. On the left-hand side of the uh, of the, the page, there's the reviews tab. You can click on that and then there's a question. Do you recommend the Murdy Creative Company? And you can answer yes or no. Uh, and you can leave us a good review there. You can also go read all of our reviews. There's just so many of them and they make me so happy. You can also leave a review on the podcast. It actually really does help. I like reading the reviews on the podcast. If you like this and share it, it's, it really helps. It really does mean a lot to me and it means a lot to the people who uh, who work at this company. So, so please share the podcast. Um, but word of mouth is still the best form of advertising. So please tell your friends all about the Murdy Creative Company. And uh, if you'd like to, to be part of our ambassador program, make a little bit of commission off sales that you can generate, go check that out at murdycreative.co slash ambassador murdycreative.co slash ambassador singular and you can uh, you can definitely be part of that program and we'd love to have you and you can you know you can make some money repping the company so go check that out if you have any podcast topics you want to hear about specifically send me an email I'm always happy to talk about anything right I like to talk about the behind the scenes of the company so I'd love to talk to you more about what the podcast topics you're interested in and a lot of the podcast topics in the past have been suggestions that people have asked about so send me your questions or post in the comments if you have a specific one you want to hear more about if you're looking for multiple binders for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, brides and groomsmen gifts, let's get into the way of that season. Uh, if you're interested in any of that stuff, check out our bulk discount program. You can email us if you have any questions. We do have bulk discounts for quantities or of orders starting at five or more. So send us a message if you're curious about that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day and goodbye.